What's up, B-Squad? It is your boy, JB, and I am here today with a brand new review for Power Book 3, no, Power Book 2, Ghost, Season 3, Episode 5, No More Second Chances is the title of this episode, you guys. So, before we go ahead and get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you guys aren't subscribed yet, do me a solid favor and stop taking me out in this date and having me pay for it at the end of it. You guys can do me that favor by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, turning on your post notifications, and also by sharing the video. And with that out of the way, you guys, without further ado, let's discuss Power Book 2 Ghost. Shout. All right, you guys, so this was another good episode. I'm laughing because I just finished my Little Marriage Huntsville video, and I had already gone to my power notes, and I thought about a scene that cracked me up. It was hilarious. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about it. Um, so we see, so I'm gonna start up with Jenny, Blanca, and Zongs. Blanca, oh, she gets on my nerves. So we see Jenny. So Jenny is with Blanca Rodriguez and Sax, right? So, you know, we know that Monet Tahara killed you know, Whitman, we should have listened to him. I was like, girl, shut the fuck up. Oh, God, Blanca annoys me. So, Blanca, Sax, and Jenny are drowning their sorrows. I was like, but y'all two just had it out with, with Kevin. So, basically, what Jenny's trying to say is we know that Monet Tejada, you know, unlived Kevin Whitman, but we're not doing anything. You can't prove it. You can't prove that Monet is lying. You have your suspicions that she is. But the thing is, Davis and Monet set this thing up so well. So that's neither here nor there, right? So Belonga says, well, you know, this might be tied to the Tahadas. So this Russian drug dealer was killed and he was the connect for the Castillos. So there might be a connection there. And sex is like, that is a leap. I was like, exactly. But we have photos of the Castillos outside of the Tahadas, you know, um, penthouse. I was like, girl, will you shut up? Oh, will somebody just, just do something to Blanca? So Jenny wants to know, when it comes down to it, Jenny wants to know who is the connect for the Tahadas. Well, I don't know if you're going to figure out who the connect is. We know who the connect is, but I don't know if you're going to, that's not going to be an easy one to figure out. And it might be, it might not be, right? I'm kind of curious because Mecca was a CI. So Blanca knew nothing about, Mecca was Blanca's CI. So Mecca never told her where he got his drugs from. He never mentioned Noma. You know what? I would never mention Noma either because the bitch is crazy. I would never fucking mention Noma. Who? What? Never heard of her. I would never. Uh, no. So we see Blanca. Blanca went over to the hospital. You guys remember in last week's episode, the CI with the arms dealer, he got shot in the back, right? So he's in critical condition. Now, Blanca went to the hospital to, you know, go see him. But when she got there, she found out, oh boy, was done. So we see Drew and Gordo. Drew and Gordo, they got to the hospital because they were actually going to take out the CI. And I'm going to explain why Drew and Gordo wanted to take out the CI in just a little bit. But he was already deceased, right? And the place was swarming with DEA all kind of side, all types of law enforcement, right? So what they did was they went down to where they keep, you know, people's personal effects. They gave a woman a wad of cash and she gave them their stuff, um, the CI stuff. So they took his phone, they found all the pictures, Drew deleted them, deleted, deleted, took the SIM card out, broke it, threw it down the sewer. Gordo had the phone, threw it down the sewer. Blanca, she ain't got nothing, right? So. We, found, we see that Sax found something that may actually help him with getting Theo out of jail. So he took it to Davis, he presented it to Davis, and Davis was like, okay, well, let's go tell Theo, right? 
Sax was like, eh, think it might just be on you. I'll stay behind, right? So when he did do that, Sax, oh, slimy, grimy ass, went into Davis's office and found the files that were, came from Kevin's house. Now, it'll bring up a lot of questions about how he got these files, but it doesn't necessarily point him towards Monet. Well, actually, nope, that's a lie. It does point him towards Monet because that file does mention, oh, sweet Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus, I just thought about something. That file, ooh, ooh, that file. With Sax knowing about that file, it does muddy the waters just a little bit, right? Because we're gonna, it's gonna lead into what I'm gonna talk about later. Ugh, it kind of does muddy the waters because, not necessarily. Not necessarily, I just thought about it, because the file is in Davis's office and it's locked up. So it doesn't link him to Monet. It doesn't link him to Monet. Okay. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Because you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys, if you guys watch the episode already, you guys know where I'm going with that. But let me know what you guys think, right? So Sax tells, Texan Jenny, telling her that he found the file in Davis's office, right? She's ignoring him. So then we see Sax as Sax pulled up on, you know, Jenny, called Jenny's phone. Jenny ignored him. So he followed Jenny to the safe house where Lauren is being held. So he pretended like he was there to see her. The guy was like, I need to see your identification, right? So then Jenny came out. She's like, are you following me? And Sax was like, what the is going on here? So they were talking and I'm like, Sax, you don't see her in the background? Cause Lauren, that, that door is glass and you can see through it. I'm like, so you don't see Lauren, light skin ass behind you. So Lauren came outside and that's when Sax finally said, so you done made me believe that she was dead this entire time. I was like, she sure the hell did. And he left and Lauren was pissed. Cause he told Lauren like, you can, you can leave at your own. You're not, you're not being held here. You can leave. I was like, um, girl, you might can leave, but I don't know if you should leave. I think you might need to stay your ass right here in this safe house because there are a lot of people out there that want you, you know, swimming with the fishes. But let's pause here and we're going to move forward, you guys. All right, you guys, so there's going to be a part of this episode where I didn't understand what the hell was going on, but I'm going to talk about the best I can. So we see Tate. So Tate is helping out in Harper's class today, right? So they are talking about second chances in the U.S., right? Do I believe in second chances in the United States of America? I'm with brown skin Keisha, Brashandria, right? And I'm with um, Diana. White people, they get it. When it comes to them, they do get it easy. They do get it easier when it comes to getting a second chance, right? A white person can go to jail for even a blue collar crime. Now, I will say when it comes to white people, it's not all white people. Most time it's the ones with the privilege, right? But they can go to jail for anything or they can do, or they can have any kind of scandal in this country. And, you know, they can pay their debt to society and they can come back and rehabilitate, rehabilitate their, you know, their image. And it's like you never, you never discuss it again, right? Whereas when it comes to a black and brown person, we're not afforded those same luxuries. Especially like how Diana was talking about black people. If we go to jail, you're supposed to go to, if you go to jail, you do the, you do your time, then you can come back out and be, you know, and you're rehabilitated, right? But that's not the case because like she said, when black people, when we come out, we are, you know, felons. They can't really get, they can't, they can get a job, but it's going to be extremely hard and their voting rights are stripped of them, right? So where is that second chance for everybody? And then one of the little boys was like, well, you know, my family came over. They were like, please don't say it. He said, my family came over on the Mayflower. I was like, those colonizers? <laughs> Okay, so even Braden has just had to chime in and say, you know, my brother just last year, he was, you know, he said that he was selling drugs on the same campus, but here today he is working on Wall Street. But if it was a black or indigenous person of color, 
they wouldn't have been afforded that same luxury in the absolute. Look at Tariq. Tariq didn't even do any, well, technically he did, right? But they don't know that Tariq was behind course correct. But Tariq couldn't even, Tariq's name was tarnished. He couldn't, he didn't have a dorm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, while he's in class, Tariq got a text message from Monet. So, Monet wants for Tariq to find out where International Guap was the day that Z died. I'm like, girl, yikes. So, we see at the class that Tariq went up to Tate to tell Tate that he got some information for him, right? That to pass on to, you know, Blanca, Jenny, and the likes, right? So, he told him that the streets are saying that it's International Guap who killed Z in retaliation for you know, the GTG shooting, right? So Tate's like, you know what, well, my little brother, I'm going to pass that information on. So this is the part of the episode where I was like really confused because I didn't know what was, I knew, I kind of know what's going on, but I kind of don't. So we see Kiki, Lucas, so they are with RSJ, right? And Tariq and Brayden are also there. And I think the interesting thing for me is the fact that Tariq and Brayden are the interns. I know some companies do treat their interns like they are, you know, part of the team, right? But not like this in board meetings. You don't typically see that, right? So Lucas is presenting to RSJ, I guess, a business, I, you know, a business that they want to partner up with some people with, right? So RSJ is like, okay, well, you know, we can go over to wherever, wherever the hell this company is, right? And Luke was like, okay. And he said, I want Tariq. And, you know, Luke was like, he's just an intern. He said, oh, he's just an intern. Was he just an intern when you came to get my business? And Luke was like, ha, ha, you, you got me. He can go. So while they're in this meeting, um, Tate texts Tariq calling him. He texts him saying, you little line motherfucker. I was like, he, it actually said, you lying motherfucker. I was like, what the hell? I cracked up when I when he, when he that text message just popped across the screen. And it said, you lying motherfucker. Because <laughs> I read it in Tate's voice, right? So we see Tariq. Now, Tariq actually didn't, was, you know, didn't really want to go because he has this date with Effie, right? So RSJ was like, bring your girlfriend with you, right? So we see them at the hangar. And I guess Effie knows something about this business that they're going to do some do to work with. And Tariq wanted to explain something that Effie had told him to RSJ. So then we see Brayden. He wants to go over to, I don't know where they're going. Wherever they're going, he wants to party, right? And Kiki was like, we're not going to party. So Brayden put his AirPods in his ear. And when he put his AirPods in his ear, he dropped his phone. I was like, how did that happen? And his AirPods still stayed on. Because, I mean, my AirPods, if I drop my phone and start walking away from that hoe, that's when that thing going to say, doop, 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 and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you know, it's going to say it's out of range. So, when he dropped his phone, Kiki picked up his phone, and then that's when his phone started dinging about those deposits that are coming through from that Bitcoin thing, right? So, we see the group, and so the people that they're meeting with, they're Italians. As you guys know, Tariq can speak Italian, and I didn't remember that from the original power that he spoke. Italian, but um, okay, I ain't got I ain't got nothing to say, right? So the company that they're pitching, that they're, they're dealing with, they are having some problems with a patent, I guess, here in the states. So RSJ and the likes, they were able to use that to their advantage, and I'm assuming that that was a conversation that Tariq had, right? So we see Tariq and Effie. They went out on a date, and you know. He's thanking her for helping him with this business deal with RSJ. Now, while they're sitting talking, who walks up? Oh, scary ass Noma. I was like, oh, this woman is just creepy as hell. Her and her henchmen. So, uh, basically, she wants them to do a job for her. She wants them to go to her ex, who is, you know, a competitor, and get a bug. I was like, um, Noma. No, ma'am. Uh-uh. You want the bug? Never mind. I'll get the bug. <laughs> Never mind. I will get it and be... Because I about to say, Noma, you can get it yourself, but Noma's scary. I don't know who's scarier. Noma or Monet? 
Actually, they're the same person. Actually, they literally are the same person. Because they both did something. Ooh, Jesus. So we see Tariq and um, RSJ. So they're at this party. And RSJ lets Tariq know that he does know about his, you know, his history with his dad. And RSJ said, you know, people told him that he would be just like his father. But he went a different route. So he has hope that Tariq will go a different route. I was like, well, good luck with that one. Because he's doing the same thing that his daddy did. Hopefully he doesn't go down the same path that his daddy did and have a son that backstabs him and shoots him. Just saying. So, Brayden and Effie, they're all trying to get this bug, right? And Brayden found it and Effie walked out the room and Brayden got caught by, what is his name? I, Lombardi. I forget what his, I think it's Fernando, Fran, Francesco, Fran, something. It started with an F. I forgot the man's name. So, Brayden got caught and taken away. So Effie went back in, grabbed it, and she got caught. But Effie was able to play it off. She flirted with the guy. I'm like, well, Brayden would have better luck if he found out if, he, if the man was gay. And then we see them as they are beating the hell out of Brayden, asking him who he works for, and he didn't say. So we see Kiki. Kiki went over to Tariq's room looking for Brayden. And now Tariq said that Brayden was still at the party. I was like, but y'all are here. So you just left your friend at the party? Huh? Uh, okay. So Tariq has told Effie, like, we need to use, leverage what we have. And I think he was leveraging, he was talking about that, the little thing with the, the bug, right? So we later, his name is Francisco. Francisco. So we see them as they met up with him, right? And things didn't go real because Francisco put a, they gave him Brayden and Tariq gave him the bug, but then Francisco put uh, the gun up to Tariq. I was like, ooh, is he about to meet his maker this soon? Nope. Noma's men took them out. I was like, um, where did those bullets come from? Then when Noma and, her, and, and the scary man came out, she had something that was up in the, in the, in the mountain area and they were covered in like, it, it was camouflage. I was like, you know what? At this point, whatever Noma says, Noma gets. Uh-uh. I wouldn't rock with, I wouldn't fuck with Noma on any level. But Noma has a great deal of respect for Tariq. But uh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. We don't rock with Noma. Mm -mm. Noma is scary. So, Effie found out that Noma has a child. And she wants to use that to get their freedom. I was like, bitch, <laughs> she just killed the father of her child. What makes you think she gives a damn about that little baby? What makes you think she gives a damn about that child? Y'all could go kidnap that little girl. She'd probably say, kill a little bitch. That's what Norma gives. And even Tariq had to say, mm -mm. Norma just killed the, obviously that's the father of her child. Mm -mm. You can't, I don't think you can ride on Norma that easily. I wouldn't fuck with Norma. I wouldn't fuck with Noma. So we see Tariq as they got back home, right? So him and Effie are in his dorm room. He got a text message from an unknown number to meet him at the south, south gate of the campus, right? So he goes to the gate, and guess who's there? Lauren is there. Lauren doesn't know who to trust, right? But, she, but Tariq told her, what are you doing here? She was like, you sent Effie to, you know, basically. Kill me. He's like, I didn't send nobody to kill you. That's why I sent Brayden to take you out. So then she told him that Brayden got knocked out and Effie was the one that knocked him out and she tried to kill him. So he said, well, I'm going to say something. She says, you can't say anything. Nobody can know that I'm alive. I was like, Tariq, that was a dumb thing. Why would you go and address them? If she's here, that means that Effie didn't do, finish the job. So that means that her life is still going to be in danger. And she did tell him about the case that the um, feds are trying to bring against him. Good luck to you, little nigga. Let's pause here and wrap up this episode. All right, you guys. So the best part of this episode was the Tejadas. They were it this episode. So the episode actually opened. We are at Monet's house, right? They, they're they finally done with this crime scene, right? So David says, by the end of the week, you should have your house back, right? And, Mon you know, Jenny came up to Monet and says, what was Kevin even doing here? She said, how the fuck am I supposed to know? I was like, damn, you such a mean ass person, right? So they ran down a list of things that Kevin has done to Monet, right? 
So then, you know, Jenny was like, how did you have time to go for your gun? I'm pretty sure she technically had her gun on him. So when he came charging at her, pop, 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 pop. Wait a minute, Monet. Well, I mean, I guess, y'all could, I guess you could say y'all got into a bit of a struggle. Never mind. I can kind of see it. Because Kevin fell back. And it's in his chest. But Monet is a good shot, so we'll give her that. So, you know, she also told him that, told Jenny, that he had it out for me when he found out that Zeke was sleeping with the professor, bitch. And I'm like, Jenny, let it go. You don't have anything. So... We see that Blanca was questioning Diana and Sax was representing Diana. So then Lorenzo went over, saw it, and he went over there and asked her, was she okay? She said, yes, right? So Dave, I've already said that. So Monet, she told Davis that, you know, she got rid of the file with Kevin, right? So he told her that, you know, she um, basically needs to be careful. She just said that she jumped to conclusions about Lorenzo. But he told her, you need to be careful, right? Because people, they still might be following you and make sure that everybody in your family has, you know, has the same alibi, right? So we see Monet as she met with Tariq, just as mean as ever. Because Tariq was wondering if she'd been following. She said, nigga, I ain't stupid. I was like, damn, bitch. Like, just a mean ass old bitch. So she says, what did you find out? I was like, hi to you too, Monet. Like, Monet just don't have no kind of tact about her. The bitch is just mean as fuck. So he told her that, you know, IG was telling the truth. He was not, he wasn't in the States when Zeke got killed. And she was like, and, and how do you know that? He said, you know, my, I, I have resources and they verified that, right? So what did this mean ass bitch do? She pulled up on Kane. She asked Kane, who told you that, um, you know, International Guap killed Zeke? He looked, she says, your ears in, is your ears in that game? I was like, calm down, Monet. Take a chill pill, bitch. Get a Snickers. You need something. Monet, you know what? I wouldn't even, you know, just like I said, Noma is somebody I wouldn't fuck with. I damn sure wouldn't fuck with this mean ass bitch. So. She said, what proof you got? He said, well, Poppy told me. She said, and what did he say? He said, the same person that, you know, beat up Drew is the same person that killed Zeke. And she said, and you believe that? I was like, well, you know, no, he didn't. He, he knew. So we see Kane later and he's telling Lorenzo that Monet, you know, she knows something, but he didn't tell her that he's the one that took out um, Zeke, right? But he feels that his dad should tell Monet. I'm like, I don't think that's a good idea. Even Lorenzo said, that ain't no good idea. So we see Drew and Gordo and, oh my God, baby, they were were in, in, they were in it. And Gordo, shout out. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to Drew, I thought Drew was, I thought Drew was, because Gordo was riding Drew. Gordo was on top of Drew, riding the hell out of him, right? I thought with Drew and um and uh, Everett that maybe Drew's versatile. I don't know, because I could have swore I thought Drew and Everett had some moments where Everett was, you know, blowing Drew's back out. Ain't got nothing to do with, <clears throat> ain't got nothing to do with nothing, right? So Gordo got a text message. I don't know who he got a text message from, and Gordo told Drew that the hillbilly racist was a CI. He was like, Drew was pissed. He was like, I didn't know that. He said, do you think I would have put myself in that position if I knew that? So he's like, what's the plan? He said, I'm gonna go take care of him. Drew said, I'm coming with you. Oh God, Drew. Drew is so, I am about to say digmatized, but I don't know what he is. I don't know what Drew is. Digmatized, asthmatized, something. Drew just lose all type of reasoning behind some ass or some dick. Mm, mm, mm. Poor Drew. Poor Drew. I believe Drew is a versatile because I'm pretty positive in season one. 
I'm pretty positive him. I'm pretty positive of that, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> I think I'm, I don't know. I don't care. So we see Monet. Monet went to go see Evelyn. And Monet. I was like, damn. You's a dirty bitch. So Monet basically told Evelyn that uh, Lorenzo is the one that ordered that hit on Uncle Frank after he found out he was a snitch. Evelyn is wondering why. I'm like, bitch, because she knows that Lorenzo killed Zeke. She can't do it because they got kids together, so she don't want that. She don't want it on her hands. Damn, Monet. That's even worse. Oof. Girl. Girl, girl, girl. So, we see the family, and they were having dinner, and Monet was just sitting there looking. I'm like, you's a dirty-ass bitch. Ooh, mm-mm-mm. Girl's a special place in hell for you. So, Diana eventually left the table because they were talking about when they used to go to, I think they said Puerto Rico, and they used to play, you know, play games with the family. Diana doesn't have those memories, and she told Lorenzo that the business is drawing more attention to her boss, right? So he told her he'll have to tell Kane to sell his, you know, do his business elsewhere. Good luck with that one, sir. I don't think you can have a conversation with people when you're six feet under. So we see Monet. So she was sitting outside at one point and she was drinking and Gordo came up. And she said, you hear from Drew? He said, yeah. She says, you treat my son right or else. He's like, or else. And she's like, you know it. So then she asked him, you know, they were talking, he was telling her that he's sorry that he didn't make it to Zeke's funeral. Then he was, you know, she was asking him, like, you know, so with the grief, how long before it goes away? He says, it, you know, with grief, it's, it's gradual. And then she said, what about the anger? I don't think he answered her, to, answered her about the anger. So we next see Monet and, to, and Lorenzo, they talking, right? So... Monet was pissed off. She's like, you know, the cops, they done done all this investigating with, you know, Kevin's death. But when it comes to Zeke's death, they ain't done nothing. I was like, well, one, Kevin's a white man. Two, Kevin was a cop. Number three, Zeke was a nigga. They didn't give a fuck. Period. So Lorenzo went on ahead and finally came clean to Monet that he is the one that took Zeke out and she slapped the shit out of him. I was like, ooh. I was like, why do I just feel, you know, I just kept looking at those windows. I'm like, ooh, I just feel like a bullet is just going to come flying through this window at any point. But no bullets came through, right? But she told Lorenzo, they are done. He needs to get his shit and get out the house, right? And they gonna, she's going to tell the kids that they just separated. And I'm like, girl, you ain't got no kind of plans. You have no type of plans of that. Mm. Just a shaded, dirty Mm, low down dirty ass. So, <laughs> Lorenzo, he was, I think he came from a bar. He was right there by that mural of Zeke, right? His tire had a big ass nail in it. I was like, um, you're in the drug game, sir. You ain't think nothing about that? Like, nothing was like, huh, that's interesting. I went in there, one no nail in my tire, but I come out, there's a nail in my tire. Then you lift your trunk up. I was like, that's your death, that's, that's your death certificate right there. And lo and behold, <laughs> Gordo came up behind him and slashed his, his throat. I was like, well, God damn. So Gordo sent a text message to somebody. <laughs> and we see Monet. So Monet is at home and her phone went off and it said done and something else beside it. And she laughed. I was like, oh, my God. You are sh dirty as hell. You're laughing because it's done. Those are, that is the father of your kids. And you are laughing. <laughs> oh, oh, Monet, you ain't shit, girl. But it was a good episode, you guys. That was a damn good episode. I enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought about that episode of Power in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, you guys. Turn on your post notifications. Share the video. And until next time, stay safe. 
take care of yourselves, you guys. Wash your hands, be blessed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. How many episodes do we have for this season? Do we have 10 episodes? If we have 10, that means we have five. No, we have, yeah, we got five more to go. Well, no. If we have 10, this was episode five, so episode six. So, yeah, we're almost done with this season, you guys. Oh, this is a good season. It's been good. But, um, yeah, let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Again, turn on your post notifications. Share the video. And until the next time, please stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I know I repeated that, but bye.